That's enough on the speed bag for now. You got a pretty good uppercut, you kid. We used to call guys like you bruisers. No, being a ghoul is more than the good looks. It's about having a memory that goes a long time before the war. Remember the teeter? The little fights disappeared into a lot. Came out a champion. I think his actual name was Bruno. Bruno Burchi. Near the junk you're dead. I think I have an old transcript about him. Somewhere next to the dummy. Over there. Bruno. Bruno Burchi. I knew the face. Long before I knew the name. To me, was a face I saw years before I was made overseer. Even while we were still dating, decided to try something new. A down-home boxing match. I can still remember that ramshackle arena. The old wooden benches. Probably taken as salvage. The smell of cheap cigarettes in the air. The pickaxe pilsner. The blackwater brew. The smell. I'll always remember that smell. The first few matches were nothing. Special. Two guys beating on each other for three minutes. Bet a lot could have settled in those days with just two guys. Instead of millions. Then the announcer rung that bell. A special match. The teenage terror. The mythos was narrated. Chained up in the junkyard by his father. Had to compete with dogs for scraps of food. I don't know what was fat. And what was obviously fiction. Uh, I could have never guessed his age when he finally came out. The fight was illegal of course. This ramshackle arena was nothing sanctioned. Let alone a teenage boy being pitted against a full grown man. A bulldog of a boy. Barely human. That jutting jaw. The nose. Probably already broken half a dozen times in his short life. There was no headgear. Not even sure there were mouth guards. His side man could have been his father, uncle, or a complete stranger. Nobody remembered who he was anyway. The other man, his opponent, nobody I would like to see in a dark alley or a well at one. Looked like something that had crawled out of the swamps near Harper's Ferry. The bell rung, and his opponent took a couple of jabs. Should have floored the boy, but he took them in stride. Waiting. Watching. Suddenly a flurry of body blows and an uppercut across the man's jaw. The men got up the first time, but not the second. A bloody heap on the ring floor. And a boy, almost half his size, standing. In victory. Plump arms raised. He cherished the roar of the crowd. It was a good number of years later, when at Balt Tech, they told us about the need to train the physical as well as the mental. Most of the girls were taken easy on. Most weren't going to become overseers. But I wanted to see if I could take a few blows and stood with the men. And then he came out, Chevin nearly bald. That same bulldog, but twice the weight he once was, and standing a good six inches above me. I was only sure it was him because of that same look in his eyes. He wanted victory, and he was gonna get his praise from Vault Tech now. The first student up figured he moved fast enough to fend off such a brute, but he was sorely mistaken. Two medics had to carry him away five minutes later. I didn't see him at the university after that. The next few were more cautious, rightly fearful, but he took them all down. One or two managed to get in a decent jab or two, but once they were all bloody on the ground, his growl of voice remarked, lesson learned. I volunteered next. I knew Ivan might no longer recognize me after this, but I had to take a chance to show Vault Tech that I was ready. Thankfully, I, I was given headgear a mouth guard, I didn't care that was a girl. Took several doctors to reset my jaw. Thankfully my nose also healed, and no brain damage. But, I didn't resent him. Showed up for a dozen or so lessons in bare knuckle fighting. He was as instructive as he was merciless. Wanted to make us fighters, not simply beat us. When they told me I I'd be an overseer, I had achieved everything but, I'd pay a terrible price. Leave Ivan behind. I had my staff selected for me but, I got to make a few requests. 
one of them was to have Bruno in my corner. I needed to be strong. Especially now. He showed up, maybe a month before it all happened. A sack of clothes, and a gym bag. Nothing was really said. Nothing needed to be said. He split his time between training, and security. He was who you called in when diplomacy failed. A boogeyman to keep them in line. He taught his lessons well. The medics can confirm that. But to this day, I think as many survived as did because of that. He respected anybody who stood up and was ready for the fight. He beat them badly, usually. But he gave a deserved pat on the shoulder, for having the courage to face him. Eventually, against better judgment, there was a fight club, of sorts, the tottiest, the strongest, and some of the stupidest, all stood in line to try their hand at the bruiser. I can think of a few times when somebody got the better of him. Jerry knocked him on his ass, at least once, Annabelle gave him a few fresh bruises, and I think, they loved him even more for it. When it was outside of the ring, he wasn't a violent person. Most of the time, he didn't get in his way, but he didn't go out of his way to be a bully. I know he had a girl in engineering, maybe it was in maintenance. I'm not sure, did he ever want to become a husband, or a father, I don't know. But, in a way he was a father, more so than anybody to Sebastian more so than Major Star had the right to be. Soon, among others, he and Sebastian gave lectures in those final months, about survival, about learning to live in a new world, what sacrifice meant, what you truly had to do, to live. He was still nursing a black eye, a not quite broken nose, and fresh bruises when he had our big party before Reclamation Day. But his eyes, were looking, a thousand yards ahead, to tomorrow. The Bruiser could finally have his big bout, with the world. A year through hell, and back, to Sutton. I wasn't sure about the rest but, I knew I'd be seeing the Bruiser again, on my doorstep. I walked in, a mixture of torn shirt and some old police uniform. Some old welding helmet, and he had fashioned, a beer skull into some kind of punching gauntlet. He looked right in my eyes and blamed me. There was no excuse. I had traded so much for my career, but it could be all forgiven. The question was, whatever or not, I was ready to risk it all. For victory, for my title shot, for a new fight that would settle my place in history. I was at a loss for words, but I told him that people were coming back to West Virginia. He just stood up, turned away, leaving my door he simply said, round two. The world wasn't gonna wait for people to make up their minds. One of the few smart things my old man said, you grow up in a junkyard with a son of a bitch father, a drunk mother and a bastard for an older brother, and the world didn't seem any different to me after the bombs fell. All the times my father gave me the beat down, forced to sleep with the dogs out in the cold. But, but, the lights, the roar of the crowd, it was the only addiction I really ever had. Billy got drafted, I think, which just left me, the old man, and mom. But I wasn't the same kid after all those fights, and he learned that the hard way when he laid hands on her. I was out on my ass after that, and he told me I'd meet the business end of his shotgun if I ever returned. But he fought back the tears because, his little boy, had beaten the shit out of him. But vault was there to take me in. I guess one of the supervisors had been a big fan of mine, from back in the day. Told me they'd pay to beat the shit out of some of their upstarts. There I was at vault University. I turned the whole class into cans of cheap dog food, and then just shit them out on the floor. Oh sure, they told me not to hit any of the girls, but, I said, fuck them. One day, a pretty little thing in glasses walks up to me, and told me she was next. She had to be one dumb bro to fight me, but the world doesn't show mercy, and neither did I. I thought I'd have knocked some sense into her, 
but a few weeks later, she showed up again, for more. Most of them weren't gonna last, that first one who went up against me, he went home packing, never saw him at the university again, probably went back to his boyfriend. But, that pretty little thing, against all odds, she stayed. I saw it in her eyes, she knew what she wanted, she wanted it all. I met her fellow once, some lean muscle on him, definitely not a weakling, but in the end he'd be useless, and her greatest weakness. I wasn't surprised when they almost immediately named her an overseer after her graduation. She had wanted it more than, well, anything, but I knew, somehow I knew, they wouldn't let her take him with her into the vault. However, I was surprised when they told me I was going to be assigned to a vault. I figured they would just left me for the world. I showed up at her doorstep and I knew why she wanted me there. She wanted them to survive. I put everybody, and I mean everybody, through their paces. Guys, girls, anybody, and everybody. I selected a few, here and there, the ones I knew that would definitely survive. Annabelle, they call her a bomb now I guess, Jerry, Jerry too sir, had a nasty left hook, and an even meaner uppercut. I honestly don't know who challenged him more, me, or Annabelle. And then there was Sab, Sebastian Starr, a soaking wet kid, a killer punch butt, it barely did anything to me, nevertheless he took everything I gave him and kept on standing. When I came out of the vault, the first thing I felt, saw really, the bright light, like the lights back to that ramshackle arena, I could almost, just maybe, hear a bell. I remember breaking the skull of that, thing, the scorchy thing, heard the cracking of the bones, the piss being taken out of it, as it collapsed in front of me. Flatwoods, I think I remember bedding down a girl from there once, I can't remember her name, it was a lifetime ago. The responders, divided on them. Were they facing a new world, or just keeping the old one on life support? I followed a few others up to Morgantown, passed by a Slocum Joe's, what I would have given for a decent cup of coffee and a cigarette. It had been quite a massacre at the airport, I guess the scorched thing isn't going to be going away. It looks like that Fruit Loop Maxi was here, who else would draw a dick on an eye bot? My knowledge of medicine stopped at first aid, but I guess now we have a vaccine, and more importantly, a chance at a future. I got my first new drinking buddy, a miss nanny by the name of Rose. I got a good luck and a few good stories and now, she's out of rum. I remember reading about David Thorpe, some big wig executive at Arctos. Didn't figure him for a warlord of the future though. But, the cutthroats, split into four more gangs, diehards, gourmands, blackwater bandits, trappers, but they all failed, and all died. It isn't about being a raider, it's being a survivor. You take what you need, but you have to build on that. And they just fell to camps, hunger, and other addictions. I remember the free states. I had friends among them. Well, fans and former opponents to be honest. They were really into survival but in the end they didn't. These big dumb green monsters can't even stand up to me. They'd make a good army, but they really need a master to organize them. My brother Billy went into the army, if I recall correctly. I wonder if he could have made it all the way to special forces. Apparently some of them were out here training, under a Liz Taggerdi. Would have liked to meet her, if she was still alive. I admit I'm not much for power armor. I want to feel the bone break under my fist. But it is, sometimes, necessary. I got together, with some of the others, more survivors than I would have guessed. We talked over some beer, some whiskey about what it would take to end this scorched problem, once and for all. I met up with an Abel. They had started to call her a bomb. She didn't need to say a word to me. I simply told her I was in. It was rough, probably the toughest fight I'd been in since we left the vault. But it's finally over. I managed to keep the scorched off some of the snipers. I'm pretty beat up, but here I stand, headed to my corner. Might set up something near Slocum Joe's? I don't know yet. Maybe some old training, but either way I'm ready for my next round. 